On today's Apple Daily, iPhone reactions as embargo lifts, Adobe Illustrator for iPad is released, and Apple invents mind-boggling biomedical smart glasses. This is the Apple Daily. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. And join my notification squad. iPhone reactions as embargo lifts. What do the big tech channels think? So last Friday, Apple sent out uh, iPhones to a lot of tech YouTubers, bloggers, news outlets, and they had a little bit of time to put together their videos and their thoughts on the iPhones before Tuesday when they were finally allowed to actually release their thoughts, videos, etc. So what are the big kind of major themes coming out? First, the box size, uh, even though everyone knew that it was going to be smaller, they were also surprised that it was smaller based on the videos that I've watched. Everyone was quite shocked how much smaller it is, basically half the thickness, which is kind of what was expected, I think. However, maybe it's still a bit of a surprise when you see it in person and it is that much smaller. Second, unboxing now takes no time at all. Um, Unbox Therapy as a channel is now only going to get uh, maybe a minute of watch time per video because it'll be over. Um, you're literally opening the box, you take out your iPhone, which is actually placed the opposite way up. I think in the past they used to have it screen up, this time it's screened down uh, with the camera and the colour uh, quite prominent when you open the box. You pick it out, you've got a white screen protector on there which lets you know what all of the different buttons do. So your volume up, volume down, power button, all that sort of thing. And then underneath you've got your USB-C to lightning cable for charging. But it is not the braided one that we heard so much about in the run-up to the release. The, that doesn't appear to have arrived anywhere. I don't know if that's going to be a premium option that people can have uh, direct from Apple stores. Maybe it was just something that didn't happen. As I mentioned, that uh, cable that's in the box is USB-C to lightning, which means that all of the stuff that Apple was saying about uh, people don't need a charger doesn't really make sense because it was only the Pro models last year that got a USB-C charger, so unless you had a Pro iPhone, you might need a new charger if you want to use the cable that comes in the box. If not, it is the one that will fit to most MacBooks, uh, and I'm sure there are a lot of those chargers out there, but it is a little bit um, comedic that uh, Apple has said you don't need a charger because everyone's got one and then they give you a cable that doesn't fit the one you've already got. So getting into some more specific people, MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee uh, talked about how the product red was actually more of like a peachy kind of coral kind of colour. It doesn't actually look super red. Uh, it's kind of got a kind of tinge of orange in there. But he also loved the OLED displays in iPhone 12. And everyone seems to want to hang their iPhones from the MagSafe connector. That's something else that I've noticed everyone is doing on YouTube. Uh, I Justine was a huge fan of the colours and took the phones out to shoot some video. And by the way, the video and the photos that she took on this thing look fantastic. So in general, YouTubers seem to love the finish and the colour and the design language that's being used in these new iPhones. They like the feel in the hand. They found MagSafe to be super cool, but in a couple of cases they're like, it would be better if the magnets were a little bit stronger. So I don't know if that's to do with what's in the phone or in the MagSafe connector itself. But for dashboard mounts and things like that, it might not be quite strong enough to attach your iPhone to your car in a secure enough way for long distances on bumpy roads. Adobe Illustrator for iPad is released. So Adobe's vector-based uh, graphics package has now come to the iPad from this week as part of their Creative Cloud suite. The iPad version takes advantage of the Apple Pencil support on the iPad so that users can design with precision. I'm very much looking forward to having my iPad Air at the weekend uh, and being able to design with precision with my Apple Pencil. It will be lovely. When Photoshop was released for iPad, it was a bit of a disappointment, uh, missing a number of key kind of core features that you would expect, although most of those have been added back in over time. It is now becoming quite a usable uh, version of Photoshop. I've used it on the iPad here before. The stuff that is missing though, and it was weird stuff, although it might be that I just couldn't find it, but things like just adding a drop shadow to a layer or text or something like that. It was really quite difficult. And obviously iPads don't have the best font support. 
uh, which can be quite useful when you're doing things like, uh, you know, graphic design. Apple invents mind-boggling biometric smart glasses. Uh, so Apple has been granted a patent uh, over the past couple of days, which uh, involves head gestures as a way of controlling smart glasses. Now, when it says smart glasses, we're talking Apple Glass. We think um, the image that's in the patent filing looks very much like uh, what John Prosser was um, suggesting a little while ago. Looks quite a lot like the Ray-Ban style sunglasses. These are head gestures that the glasses or HMD that's head mounted display will be able to understand things like chewing, blinking, winking, smiling, eyebrow raises, eye widening, eyes rolling, eyes squinting or the like, humming or other internal vocalizations, mms and ahs, inaudible cues, jaw motions, flaring nostrils, speaking or other external explicit language vocalizations, so voice control, mouth opening, e.g. full mouth opening, left side mouth opening, right side mouth opening, ear wiggling, other ear movement, smirking, frowning, grimacing, cheek motioning. I don't know if this is just a list of all the emojis that exist in the world. It also mentions that it could include things like brain function, which kind of fits in with what Elon Musk is doing with Neuralink, perhaps. Maybe there's going to be a link there. But also respiratory rate and or blood pressure and or heart rate and or heart rate variability, oxygen saturation, other biometric characteristics. So a lot of the stuff that Apple Watch does at the moment, uh, it looks like Apple is looking at ways that they can include those sensors into a pair of smart glasses as another option. So people that don't want to wear a watch might want to wear glasses. It, it might be that they are two kind of items that can work together, but also have the option of being standalones and still getting a lot of that health data for you. So I think this is really interesting because I think one of the keys to getting something like Apple Glass working is knowing how to interact with it. And uh, I think it would look really strange for us to be swiping stuff in front of us that doesn't exist. But I also think it would be quite strange to be walking down the street like this so that you can control the glasses that you're wearing. I hope this is something that we're going to do in private rather than uh, very much in public with those kind of gesture controls. Notification squad time, and we have one new member to the notification squad today, who is Sean R. Uh, thank you so much for joining the notification squad, Sean. I feel like there might have been someone else, and if I've missed you out, please uh, just comment again today. Let me know that you've done it, um, because I don't want to miss anyone out if you've done it. Uh, you might notice that the uh, the number back here is going up quite quickly, so it was 880-something yesterday, I think. We're now on 9.45. Hopefully tomorrow we might have four digits there. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like answering, uh, this is not a thing that is specific to this show, but if you have any questions you would like me to answer on any of our shows, please leave me a comment down below with the hashtag iCaveAnswers, and I will endeavour to answer them on the show. I try not to answer any that haven't got the hashtag because I don't know if you want it to be answered publicly mainly uh, and I want to kind of uh, protect anyone's privacy that's not wanting to be uh, spoken about on the show if you put that hashtag in there I will read out your question on the show we'll put it on the screen and stuff like that so please let me know any questions you've got it always helps me to make these shows better if I know the sort of stuff that you guys are interested in thank you so much for watching and uh, let's get to that thousand we're so close we are so close Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.